All right. Hi, art class. Um, I just wanted to share with you uh, some techniques for rock painting, which is a little late, I know, but um, part of the reason it is is because Miss Hannah was not feeling very good this week. And so this is when I got to it. But you can do any of these um, optional activities throughout the year and can share them at any time. Like Miss Jones and I were talking about it. And, um, anytime you decide that it's a good time for you to, to try these uh, techniques out, then try it out. So I was just going to show you this picture of a petroglyph in the Shumash Painted Cave in California to give you a good idea of just really neat um, older rock paintings. Uh, so this would have been an indigenous painting in California uh, in the Shumash area, Santa Barbara. And so anyway, those are really, I just thought those are really cool. Um, a lot of ge geographical stuff and locations of stars and the sun, I believe is probably what it's depicting as well as feathers um, and other things. And they have um, explanation down here um, about it, where the cave is located and <clears throat> the Library of Congress number for it. You can find out more information about that by um, looking up Shumash Painted Cave um, to, to figure out exactly what these symbols are. So stop share there. So a lot of um, older paintings in caves and on rocks were um, often like figures of hunting or gathering or specific moments that were really important. And it looks like a lot of indigenous people also um, did a lot of paintings about the motions of the stars and the sun and calendars and things like that on rocks. And so a lot of them were kind of, um, since it was painting on rock and they um, may have just been using the resources next to them a lot of the, so this one here is really detailed. The Shumash one is really good and really detailed. And there are some really detailed petroglyphs and, and paintings, but a lot of times they're, they're um, pretty geometrical and they use a lot of straight lines and not a lot of colors. So usually you'll see reds. Um, that Shumash one had uh, also whites and black, which was really interesting. Um, but you'll see a lot of reds. Uh, based in different kind of natural tints and natural paints they would use for other things. And you'll notice that um, it, seems, it seems relatively simple, um, some of the figures on it do. Uh, and I think that varies depending on which one you're looking at, but a lot of rock paintings tend to just be um, very two-dimensional. So the figures uh, tend to be kind of lines in motion um, and there will be details in some of them, but some of them there um, will be sparse details. But anyway, in the workshop that you guys had, um, they suggested that you try it on a, just a second, hey buddy. They suggested you try it on like a piece of paper or like a cardboard or a dark piece of paper that you could first crinkle like so make it look more like a rock feature right because if you crinkle it up a little it makes it looks like it has um, the crags and the rock like that shoe mesh one we were looking at so that does look pretty rock like um and they also suggest a couple things which you may or may not have and that's okay they suggested tempura paints or acrylics um a sponge um I would also maybe even tell you if you have them, um, pastels or crayons, because uh, you can maybe find that kind of more natural looking colors in pastels and crayons. And pastels have this sort of um, natural dye looking look to them. So I think pastels would really be fun to use for this. And they, they told you with your sponge that you can make it kind of look worn. So I think that's why they had the sponge. So I have a couple colors to choose from here. I have this brown here, which I'm gonna to try to work with. Um, 
and they they say sponge or paper towel and either would probably work and i think they just meant for like um kind of aging the rock of it so this is my rock and i am aging it by and making it look more natural by kind of giving it texture right <clears throat> like that so that's what the sponge is for. You can do this with a paper towel um, or toilet paper. I think toilet paper will probably be less absorbent and maybe not have as much texture, but that kind of looks more. And you can try different colors. Like that was sort of a, a dark brown and I have black here. We'll see how that goes. I'm gonna put it with my brown because I don't want it to just be black, but you've seen rocks when they look kind of worn. So I'm going to put a little black and a little bit of this light green. Green. And I'm going to mix them together, see how that goes. And if I don't like it, I can just kind of rub it in. We'll see. OK. And this is just an old sponge that I don't, um, that I don't intend on using. So again, I didn't like that color really. That's OK. I can paint over it if I want to or try again. But in Washington, we have a lot of moss on our rocks. And so I was trying to make a mossy looking rock. Let's see if I've succeeded in that or if it just looks like crazy. How it's crazy to me, but oh well. Okay. So, okay. You get your idea of where your rock is. Good. Sure, it has lots of texture. Okay. And then you decide, okay, now that I have my rock painting with my texture, okay, um, what do I want to paint on it? Right. Um, and really, like I said, it can be pretty simple, it can tell a story, it can just be figures. Um, it can be like something you did. Like a lot of times the paintings represented, like I said, the stars or the sky or the movements of the planets, but sometimes they represented like battles or um, interesting events that occurred. And so if I just wanted to maybe use a pastel, you could paint it or color it with crayons as well. That would work. Whatever you have is fine. Even if you just had pens and pencils do your best um so let's say i just want to do like a very simple this is kind of a circle i hope you can see that yeah circle it's me so lots of crazy hair okay see my crazy hair and then my body not that skinny, but we get the idea. Okay, there's me. There's stick figure Hannah. And this is me um, right here. And maybe I wanted to make a hieroglyph of my family. I have one, two. Now my kids are actually a lot bigger than this now, but let's say this is from a couple years ago. All right, two kids. You can't see it yet, but I'll show it to you better in a second. One has longer hair because she's my little girl. See? Okay. And then back behind them can be my husband with his hair. Okay. The family there. Okay. I'm going to actually move this slide away a little because I think it'll help you see it better. Okay. Try to move it so that you can, there we go. So yeah, so it looks like it's on a rock. If I were to really put it up close, you know, it looks really textured. You have the pastels here kind of made this more chalky color come to life. The other cool thing about pastel is, um, you can kind of rub it with your finger and make it look a little bit more 
Um, see, it comes off really good. Just to flow a little bit better, make it look a little older. Like so, okay. And so the idea is that you would create a rock like looking surface with a brown piece of paper. Um, if you don't have a brown piece of paper, you could do just a regular white piece of paper. And if you don't have a sponge, you could do it with a paper towel and you can kind of do that. If you have um, pastels and white paper, you could even wipe pastels on there or crayons. I mean, anything you have works. But I just like to show you that, you know, it doesn't take that much stuff to make a little rock art like that. Um, and I told Miss Jones that I could um, give you more advice on that tomorrow if you want to, but it's just something fun and simple. Um, I suggest you like definitely look at the rock art in the art section that's there, but maybe you try to find um, for yourself what different types of rock art there is. Uh, there's some cave paintings, but some really are on like the sides of cliffs and things like that. Um, and so maybe just do some research and find ones that look interesting to you. You could even try to recreate some of the ones that uh, that you liked. So for instance, I really like the Shumash one. So I have that one right here, but I know there's, a, let me try to get, I can't remember where that was. Let's see, cliff painting, indigenous. I can't remember the name of it, but let's see if I can find it. <clears throat> the prehistoric Amazonian one. That one's pretty cool. Not the one I was thinking about, but it is really cool. There's all sorts of good ones. Uh, let's look at this uh, right here. Rock art right here. Okay. So this one is from Broadview, which it's talking about the sacred indigenous rock art sites, which are under threat in Canada, um, because a lot, you know, development will oftentimes, um, doesn't really care about the history of the place necessarily. And so this is a really interesting one. You can see in this, um, this kind of, these kind of mythological beings, um, or story beings or people, um, from a certain Canadian story probably. And then back here, it looks like there's a canoe. That one's really cool. Um, and then there's these here. Um, so spray paint, paint covering the pictographs at Lake Magoog in 2017. So as you can see, some people, and that actually recently happened to one of our sacred sites here in the Tamanawas Rock is somebody put spray paint over it. Um, and so spray paint coming over some of these rocks and these sacred sites have been a big issue. Um, and then, so there's pictographs on these on these um, here and then people spray painted over them. So that was a really sad day for, for people. Um, but yeah, you can see some of these um, petroglyphs in the provincial park near Petersburg, Ontario, um, and what they would look like. And this one looks like, a, you know, a creature, maybe a turtle or something like that. There's a lot of turtle um, creation stories. It's very possible that it could be a turtle. And I like this one right here. This is a really cool one. It's actually really detailed, guys. Like, um, you can see the figures really well. You can see this one has like kind of a spotted, um, speckled body. And this one has like more stripes along its body. And this one has antlers. Um, and you can see the figures down here and the weapons they're using really clearly. Uh, and so this one's like, it says up to about a thousand years ago is when that one was made. Um, so there's some really cool ones out there. Um, and I suggest that if you're interested in trying to, to do something like that, to research the ones um, close to or research ones that you just think are particularly interesting. They did calendars on rocks before, like I said, indigenous people did, um, told stories. So I would just do some searching on your own and find some ones that are interesting to you. And maybe you can try to recreate some of those images on your own um, rock wall. Because what I think you'll find is that especially when you have limited resources, like pretend that you had um, a handmade brush and only natural materials um, to make that picture with. I don't think I could have done the kind of detail, um, that kind of beautiful detail with just those things. And so, and for me, I even actually had a whole bunch of resources right here. And mine doesn't look anywhere near as good as those ones. So 
it doesn't really have to be good. I just uh, hope that you look it up and um, are interested in those types of for art forms because they're they're pretty cool. They're pretty special. They're generally very old and um, help tell stories about people who came before us. So I think those are really cool. So uh, good luck. If you have any questions, of course, you can ask Miss Jones and you can write Miss Hannah or if you just want to show us, that's awesome. And uh, so sorry, this is a little late, but we don't have like a real due date for these um, for these art projects and we weren't feeling very good this week. So I didn't post it very early, but I hope it helps for anyone who might want to do it in the coming week.